Introduction to ECG Interpretation The ECG is one of the most commonly requested diagnostic tools. Therefore, it is not surprising that basic proficiency in interpreting ECGs is required in medical practice. Electrocardiogram Electro refers to electricity, cardio refers to the heart, and gram means to record something. Therefore, an electrocardiogram is a device that captures the electrical activity of the heart. When we request an ECG to review the electrical activity of the heart, what we are really interested in is its anatomical structure and its function. We are interested to know what does the heart look like and how is it functioning? Is it looking and functioning as it should or is it not? The Cardiac Conduction System Cardiac activity is initiated and mediated by the conduction system that exists in the subendocardium. The conduction system of the heart mediates cardiac contraction and is composed of myocardial conducting cells. In a normal heart, it starts at the sinoatrial node, which is a bundle of specialized cells located in the right atrium. It then moves to the AV node via the internodal tracts and the left atrium via Bachmann's bundle. The electrical activity reaches the ventricles via the AV node, then to the bundle of his, left and right bundle branches, the fascicles, and eventually to the Purkinje fibers. An important note is that the SA node is the natural pacemaker of the heart. This means that the electrical activity is typically initiated here. However, this is not always the case. Sometimes the electrical activity can be initiated from another region in the atria known as an atrial rhythm. It can originate from the junction, and this is known as a junctional rhythm. Or it can originate from the ventricles, and this is known as a ventricular rhythm. On ECG, one would look for features which will help determine the origin of the electrical activity. This is the P, Q, R, S, and T wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization, the QRS complex ventricular depolarization, and the T wave ventricular repolarization. Abnormalities of the P wave suggest abnormal changes involving the atria given that it represents atrial depolarization. Abnormalities of the QRS complex and T wave suggest abnormal changes involving the ventricles, given that this represents ventricular depolarization and repolarization, respectively. This region here is known as the ST segment, representing the time between ventricular depolarization and repolarization, whilst this region here, the PR segment, represents the time between atrial depolarization and ventricular depolarization. We look here to determine how the electrical activity moves between the atria and ventricles. We can also pinpoint the location of these changes based on whether there is vascular territory involvement, which requires you to look at a full 12 lead ECG. This concept of cardiac walls, vascular territories, and contiguous leads is not covered here, but is covered separately. See where below. At 4 Minute Medicine, we provide a five step process to ECG interpretation, which is covered in our ECG course. The five step process starts by analyzing the rhythm, then systematically works through the different waveforms in order as seen on the ECG trace. Step 1 Analyze the rhythm. The first step is to determine the general location of the cardiac pacemaker above or within the ventricles and to describe the key characteristics of the cardiac pacing, which includes rate, fast or slow, and regularity, regular or irregular. Essentially, the goal is to answer the following questions Where is the cardiac pacemaker? above or within the ventricles? And how is the electrical impulse firing fast or slow, regularly or irregularly? Step two, describe the P wave. The P wave represents atrial depolarization. Therefore, assessing the P wave can provide some information regarding the physiological and anatomical status of the atria. Additionally, this step helps to confirm whether the cardiac pacemaker is at the sinoatrial node. In step two, the aim is to answer the following question. Are the atria structurally and physiologically normal? Additionally, if a rhythm is found to have a supraventricular origin in step 1, one can answer this question. Is the sinoatrial node the likely location of the supraventricular rhythm? Step 3. Assess the PR interval and segment. The PR interval represents the movement of the electrical activity between the atria and ventricles. If the interval is short, this suggests that there is an accessory pathway, meaning that the electrical activity from the atria reaches the ventricles via an alternative pathway. If the PR interval is prolonged, this suggests a block, meaning that there is an obstruction impeding normal conduction between the atria and ventricles, and this is known as a heart block. The question answered during this step is, does the electrical activity move normally between the atria and ventricles? Step four, describe the QRS complex. The QRS complex represents ventricular depolarization, 
and therefore, upon review of the complex, can identify structural and physiological abnormalities at the level of the ventricles, such as ventricular hypertrophy, bundle branch blocks, and fascicular blocks. The question to be addressed during this step is, are the ventricles structurally and physiologically normal? Step 5. Review the ST segment and the T wave. This section is related to ventricular repolarization. Therefore, like step four, step five can provide information regarding the structural and physiological status of the ventricles. By completing this step, one may identify ischemia, infarction, and electrolyte imbalances such as hyperkalemia. Now, to simplify, there are really three questions you aim to answer when looking at an ECG. One, where specifically is the origin of the electrical impulse, the pacemaker, the SA node, atria, junction, or ventricular rhythm? Two, how does the electrical impulse move between the atria and ventricle, normally via the AV node or abnormally bypassing the AV node, or there is a block at the level of the AV node? Three, are the atria and ventricle anatomically and physiologically normal? For example, are they hypertrophied or getting adequate cardiac perfusion? If you look at our steps, you'll see where is the cardiac pacemaker question is answered by completing step one and two, and how does the impulse move between the atria and ventricles is answered by looking at step three. And lastly, are the atria and ventricles normal is answered by looking at step two, the P wave, which represents atrial depolarization, and step four and five, where, where they represent ventricular depolarization and repolarization, respectively. So the take-home message here is that you can think of the aim of looking at the ECG is to tell the ECG's story. In the same way, most stories have a beginning, middle, and an end. The same is true of the story to be told when talking about ECGs, where the beginning is the atria and the end is the ventricles. In the beginning, you need to describe the origin of the electrical impulse. Where is the cardiac pacemaker? Additionally, talk about what is happening at the level of the atria. Next, we describe the middle. How does the electrical activity connect between atria and ventricles? Through the normal pathway via the AV node, or is there a heart block or an accessory pathway? And lastly, the end is about looking at the ventricles. Is the electricity moving through them normally, and is the anatomical structure normal? If you'd like to know more, join one of our ECG Essentials webinars or take our full ECG course. See the description below.